Okay, we're going to begin the lecture on how to perform a correlation using uh, SPSS or PASW, the newer version. Um, let's take a look at our data. We have uh, five columns, one participant ID, social anxiety, something called rejection sensitivity, something called depressive symptoms, and something called disgust sensitivity. We can imagine that this might be a study that is uh, looking to relate social anxiety, how sensitive one is to rejection, how many depressive symptoms they have, and how sensitive they are to disgusting things. So if we click on variable view, uh, we can get a better understanding of this. We can see that social anxiety is indeed level of social anxiety, level of rejection sensitivity, amount of depressive symptoms, and level of disgust sensitivity. And in all cases, it looks like higher numbers indicate more of uh, the attribute and they all seem to be on a scale of maybe 1 to 7, let's say. So in order to run a correlation, uh, we're going to run up to Analyze. We're going to go down to Correlate. And we're going to click on Bivariate. This is the most common kind of correlation that we'll be running. When we click on Bivariate, we're going to see uh, two windows. The one on the left is all of our variables. The one on the right is what variables we want to correlate. Let's say we want to correlate social anxiety and rejection sensitivity. We'll simply highlight them both and move them over here. We will leave Pearson correlation clicked, and we'll leave two-tailed clicked. And we'll also leave this click. So essentially, all we need to do is move those variables over. The Pearson correlation is the most common kind of correlation. We want to run a two-tailed test, meaning we're checking both to see if it's a positive or a negative correlation. And this simply means that it's going to let us know if something is significant or not. So we don't have to look for it on our own. We can then hit OK. When we click on OK, we get one new box that comes up. It says level of social anxiety, level of rejection sensitivity along the, uh, this column, along these rows, level of social anxiety, level of rejection sensitivity. Now you'll notice that it says Pearson's correlation coefficient, significance, and then our N. N refers to the number of people making up the correlation. Significance is the significance value, the p-value of that correlation, how likely it is to find two variables that correlate as they do by chance alone. And this is the Pearson's correlation coefficient. That's essentially what the r-value is. The, the, instead of a, a t or an f, it's our r-value. You'll notice that there is a 1 here, meaning there's a perfect correlation. You'll also notice there's a 1 here. If we look carefully, you'll see that these occur when we are comparing the same variable with itself. So it's not very interesting. We're not really, we don't really care about these one columns. What we're looking for are the two different ways to look at the two variables. We can either look at level of social anxiety and rejection sensitivity, or we can look at level of social anxiety and rejection sensitivity. They will be the exact same thing. In this case, if we look at the correlation between level of social anxiety and level of rejection sensitivity, we see that the uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient, the R, is 0.62. We see that the significance value is 0.06, and that there are 18 people making up this correlation. Now remember that significance value is the same as a p-value, and if our significance value is smaller than our alpha, alpha is 0 0.05, then it means that the correlation is significant. In this case, 0 0.06 or 0 0.06 is smaller than 0 0.05, and therefore it is significant. These two little asterisks here tell you that the correlation is actually significant. In this case, the 0 0.01 level, which simply means it's actually smaller, not just than 0 0.05, but 0 0.01. So it kind of helps you out automatically without you having to look it up on your own. Now let's say we wanted to run another correlation. We can go back to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, and we can actually include amount of depressive symptoms and level of disgust sensitivity all in one correlation. And we can hit OK. When we do this, we get the same box we had before, but now there are more variables in it. Again, you can see that there is this diagonal column of ones. That is where every variable is correlated with itself. If we now want to look at level of social anxiety and amount of depressive symptoms, we can see that there is a significant correlation. But there's no correlation between level of social anxiety and level of disgust sensitivity. We know that because the significance value is greater than 0 0.05, and there's no asterisk. If we want to look at level of rejection sensitivity and amount of depressive symptoms, we can see that that is significant at 0 0.029. But it's also not related to disgust sensitivity. And the last one is depressive symptoms with disgust sensitivity 
also not significant. So it looks like disgust sensitivity isn't related to these three other variables. This is how you conduct a correlation.